what up? Welcome to my channel. Welcome back. I'm Mariam. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the most underrated makeup techniques that you should know, that everyone should know in 2023, especially if you are a makeup lover, enthusiast, psycho-obsessed person like I am. Some of these techniques you might have seen before. You might have even seen them on my channel. A lot of them are things that I do in my personal life, perhaps not in any videos outside of the Makeup for Real Life videos. But the purpose of this video is to combine all of them together, is to really show you all of the techniques that will elevate your makeup game and that will make your makeup life so much easier. So I hope you love this one. I had so much fun putting it together. This is the look that I came up with. Very, very simple, but very effective. And trust me, there are lots of techniques. So do let me know which one is your favorite down below in the comments section. Products are listed as always. Subscribe button is you know where. If you have not hit it yet, it is your opportunity to do so, to join the fam. And now let's get into this video. Underrated makeup techniques everyone should know in 2023. Here we come. Alrighty, so assuming that you already have your skincare on your face, for me, because I'm oily AF, very oily, I like to do my skincare at least 45 minutes before I do my makeup so that it's already set into my skin. And then I just like to prime my face, specifically the center of my face where I have pores. I use the Danessa Meyer Exploring Balm Powder and kind of just pat it into my pore zones and stretch it out a bit to smooth and to control shine. So this is not yet an underrated technique. This is probably something that everybody does, whether you know makeup or whether you don't know makeup, if you prime before your foundation, then this is the order in which you are probably applying your primer. So nothing new here yet. The next thing I'm going to do is going to be actually the first technique that I want to share with you guys today, something that I feel is underrated, but it's something that I think everyone should know about, especially in 2023 with the current trends. It is called underpainting. So the underpainting technique basically assumes that you are applying your contour, your blush, and your highlight underneath your foundation. This is something that I've done for a very long time, though probably not always on camera, but it's something that I like to do in my real life, and I think it's something that looks incredible in real life. So for that, I'm gonna go in with the Shade 7 Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder, also by Danessa. I'm gonna use a dense but angled brush. I'm gonna start with the contour. Because this product is very, very sheer, it's great to use if you are a beginner, or if you have oily skin, or if you just don't like a super heavy contour like me. Also, this shade is a bit on the light side for contouring. So if you want to use something that's a little bit deeper or perhaps a little bit cooler, you can do that. But I'm just using this because it works for me and this is the color that I'm going for. And again, this is also doubling as my primer for the perimeter of my face because it has the same function as the universal shade. It's still blurring, it's still controlling my oils. Now I've also noticed, and you probably have noticed as well, if you've been following this underpainting technique, you've probably seen a lot of people on TikTok doing the crazy contour from your ear around and under your cheekbone and then all the way down to your chin, creating this um, rectangular effect around the jaw that almost looks like you had your uh, fat removed from your cheeks, like that buckle fat removal. People have been accusing me of this four years because I think I have this naturally. Like it kind of looks like my cheeks are a little bit hollow here. And I honestly think this is something that has happened to me as I grew older, as I grew a little bit more mature. Because when I was younger, when I was a teenager, or even in like my early 20s, my face seemed to be a lot rounder on the bottom. And now it's like a lot more chiseled. So to me, when I see that technique, personally, I find that it makes everyone look older. I don't care if you're a supermodel, Bella Hadid, I, I don't care who you are. To me, I am just not a fan of that buckle fat removal removal, underpainting, contouring technique. I just don't think it looks that great. <laughs> I try to avoid that. In fact, I sometimes like to highlight the hollows on my cheeks just so I can pop them out so they don't look so hollow. But that doesn't mean that I don't like to contour along my jawline or like underneath it. But essentially, it should look something like this. You don't necessarily have to like blend it all out right away. You can make it kind of messy the way that I did now. But the next thing that I'm gonna move on to is blush. So my favorite blush at the moment is probably the Rare Beauty Liquid Blush. I love it so much. I think it's so, so pigmented and so easy to use. I'm actually gonna go a little bit overboard because I'm still showing you the underpainting technique. So I'm gonna dot three dots 
three dots of this blush. This is in the shade Happy, by the way. I'm gonna dot that to my cheeks, and then I'm gonna blend it out. Basically, I'm concentrating most of the color right here, but also bringing it inwards, and also blending it out into the temples, but I'm not going down. I'm not going past that contour line. And then I'm just adding the remainder on my nose for the cold girl vibe, and then a little bit into the brow bone area just to connect everything like that. All right, so at the moment, everything that I have going on on my face probably looks very crazy on camera, and that's okay. I'm gonna add one more thing, and that is gonna be the Let Me Glow Illuminating Serum from Keys Soul Care. I'm gonna use this as my highlighter, and basically, this serum-y type of product, I'm gonna apply wherever I want a little bit of glow. I've really been loving the jaw highlight lately. I'm so funny, I don't like the buckle fat removal contour, but I love the jaw highlight. I feel like both of these were made popular by Bella Hadid, but I guess I'm one of those people that I only stick to the trends that I like, you know? And I think so should you. Do what feels right. I feel like that's another underrated makeup advice. Just do what feels right to you. Of course, listen to what I have to say in this video, but if something feels like it's too much for you, like it's not really meant for your face shape or for your skin tone, then don't do it. Or you can experiment with it, and if you don't like it, you don't have to run with it. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make all of this work for you by applying foundation on top. But I'm not just gonna apply this foundation, I'm gonna show you another technique of how to make your foundation look a little bit more natural. And I feel like this is another underrated sort of technique that I guess not a lot of people do or not a lot of people talk about. But basically what I like to do is apply a little bit of foundation using House Labs Shade 260 Cool. Undertone is olive in cools. For House Labs, I'm applying a drop to each part of the face. Then I'm taking my Lancome Advanced Genifique Serum. This one has been a favorite of mine for years. And I'm gonna drop just a little bit of that. Oop, maybe that's too much. Basically, I'm creating a little mixture directly on my face and I'm shearing out the foundation. I feel like this particular serum is very flexible and it's very forgiving. You can easily use this to shear out your foundation. It won't cause any sort of disruptions with the rest of your makeup, but you have to be careful with some of those serums that have active ingredients because they may not do the same or rather they might not act the same. So basically now I'm just applying my foundation all over everything and basically now I'm just stippling this foundation all over. So this to me creates just the most natural looking finish possible. You still look like you're blushing, but you're more like flushing from within. You still look like you're glowing, but you're glowing from within. And also you look very chiseled. You don't look crazy contoured. You just look snatched, you know? I really like this technique. This is something that I do for every day. I do this with pretty much all of my foundations from House Labs. I even do this with Cali Ray, which is a pretty light skin tint, but if I really wanted to be natural and glowing, this is a technique that I've talked about, but I don't know if I've ever actually shared it or showed you how I do it. This is how I do it, I hope you try it. Next, I am going to conceal. I'm using my Tarte Shape Tape because this is my favorite concealer, but of course you could use your favorite. I'm adding just a little bit underneath the darkest part of my eye and also on the outer corner to slightly lift. I'm also adding concealer here and specifically I'm doing that because I find that this area around my nostril is a little bit more hollow so I wanna pop it out. I also want to brighten in between my brows and just like this center area and maybe just like a smidge on my nose bridge but that's about it. That's all I like to do for a natural bright look. So then I'm gonna take a fluffy brush like this one. This is the Lawless Concealer Brush. I'm gonna tap out the chin highlight Next, I'm gonna tap and blend forehead slash in between the brow highlight. Next, I do the folds. And then the most important part is the under eye. This is the part that I want to be the most pigmented, which is why I do it last, so that the concealer has a chance to solidify a little bit on the surface of my skin. And because this one is extremely, extremely pigmented, I sometimes like to use my ring finger, press the product into my under eye, and then almost like remove the excess from underneath the soft part of the skin so that I'm only concentrating the concealer part in the darkest part of my under eye. I hope that was understandable. I have a little bit of acne scarring here, so there's like some hollowness, just like in this little area, so I like to add whatever's remaining on the brush because it's a lighter concealer, and I just add it right here just to pop it out very, 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 very subtly, and that's pretty much that. Next, it's time to set the under eye. Dominique Cosmetics Loose Powder is what I'm using, making sure there's no creases, and then I'm just lightly tapping this powder just to the under eye. Again, just to the under eye. Next, I'm gonna do the folds, also just like tapping the powder in there, not really pressing it too hard, 
because in this video, I'm going for a very natural, very approachable makeup look that you could probably do quickly. And I can definitely do it quickly if I'm not talking and if I'm not actually trying to film it. Also gonna set my chin and then again, tiny amount of powder and setting in between the eyebrows and right above where I applied that concealer. So literally only setting the concealed areas. So what number are we on? We talked about underpainting. We talked about shearing out the foundation with serum. We talked about concealer and strategic concealing. Well, that wasn't really strategic concealing. So speaking of strategic concealing, I want to show you another technique which is personal to me. It's something that I like to use I think this is something that everyone should use whether it's 2023 or 2043 I think this is a genius technique that literally is so so helpful and making you look better I'm gonna use this Jones Road the face pencil shade 9 and literally I'm just gonna dot this product over my blemishes and over my little spots I'm also gonna use this pencil to remove some of my unwanted freckles, because I do have some. I'm not sure if they're freckles or if they're sunspots, but some of them are not the ones that I was born with, so those are the ones that I wanna conceal. Post acne marks, red spots, imperfections. You could do this with the liquid concealer as well, but I find that Tarte Shape Tape is just like way too pigmented for this technique. I think you need something that is light in texture, something that won't add additional texture and make your problem area appear bigger or larger or like more texture than what it is. So that's why I feel like using a crayon like this is probably the easiest. And if you have an exact shade match like I do with shade nine, it just makes it so, 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 so rudimentary. Anyone can do it. Next for face powder, I'm gonna go very simple and easy. I'm gonna use this Essence one, the 16 hour cover and last powder foundation. I think this one is $6 and I use it all the time because it's really good. Basically, I just use it for setting my entire face to lock in the makeup. And then for the pores, I'm gonna use my Bare Minerals Original Veil Powder. This is the smoothing product that I've been recommending for any of you who have texture or pores issues, if you are someone who's oily and have textured skin due to that, this product will help. But it's not something that I like to use all over the face because I feel like it can make you look just a little bit fakey, like a little bit too makeup-y if you are using it all over. Yes, it's great for smoothing, but it's not a product that you should be abusing. Only in those areas where you really have texture. Specifically, I think this is good for pores or like minor acne scars. Like it won't actually help get rid of major bumps or major scars, but things like pores, little fine lines, anything that creates the appearance of texture on your skin, this product will help with. Usually I don't apply this to my forehead. I just like to go in the center of the face, like around the nostrils where I have some acne scars and that's pretty much it. This is what I like to do. Next, I'm gonna show you more technique. Even though this is kind of a lot of makeup, you don't have to do every single one of these steps. I just wanna show you as many as I can in this video while still maintaining a natural look. But if you are someone who's oily like me, your skin probably eats up blush or any sort of color. Usually, in order to fix that, what I like to do is apply powder blush on top of my liquid blush that's already been set with powder. This is the Pillow Talk Beautifying Face Palette and I'm using the rosy toned blush here, Refer Brush number four. Again, I like to apply my powder blush from the temple downwards. This sort of helps me control how this product applies onto my texture and onto my pores. So I just like to smooth it down and feather it like that. So do you see how it's kind of bringing back that color from the underpainting? Like it's bringing it back, but it still looks like it's shining from within. That's basically the idea. I'm gonna do the same thing to the nose. I still want to have just a little bit of that pinkiness happening here. I think it's really cute for 2023. I really like the cold girl makeup look. I think it's appropriate for anyone, for any age. You just have to play around and make it work for you. So usually for me, if I'm afraid of a trend, I try to do the bare minimum while still being inspired by by the trend. Also in this case, I'm sticking to a blush color that looks like a natural blush as opposed to like a bubblegum pink, which is a very unnatural looking blush color. Like no one blushes bubblegum pink, unless of course you're Barbie, you know? All right, so now that I've applied my powder blush on top of my foundation and powdered down liquid blush, I'm gonna do the same with contour, but I wanna recommend this brush for you guys. This is the It Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe U Sculpted Contour and Highlight Number 18 brush. I'm not sure if this is still sold, but basically, this is a flat chisel type of brush, which is perfect for contouring, especially if you want to be on the minimal side. I'm also using the uh, Light Trio from the One Size Made for Shade collection. I like to mix a little bit of the darkest shade and the lightest shade because the undertone is what I like. Basically, I start from the top of my ear 
and I kind of gently press the powder into my skin. You see that? I'm not really swiping, I'm just pressing. And all I'm doing is I'm creating that little bit of a shadow. Once I establish that shadow, then I can kind of raise it up a little bit, mix it in with my blush and make it more natural. But essentially, this is it. This is really easy to do with a brush like this because it's a good balance between stiff and fluffy, but the fact that it is totally, totally flat and kind of narrow too is what makes the difference for me. If this brush isn't available, I'm gonna try to find a similar one from Sigma or from another brand. But to me, it just makes the technique so much more approachable. If you have a pointy chin like I do, you can easily square it out or smooth it out, you know? And then same thing with the forehead, just kind of tapping the product on. Now for your smaller areas, such as your nose or your mouth, I like to use a brush that looks like this. So essentially it's that same shape, but in a mini, almost like in a micro format. Kind of long, but kind of flat. I'm gonna dip into the darkest shade. I like to contour right underneath my lip and a little bit above. And if you apply too much, you could always go over with powder. And then same thing with the nose, basically. If you like to contour your nose, you need something a little bit smaller. For me, I don't typically contour my nose, but when I do, I just like to chisel out this area right here just to make it a little bit more straight, really, because my nose is a little bit crooked. It kind of points to one side. So in order for me to straighten it, I like to contour the point and a little bit of the bulbous area, just to kind of straighten it out. That's it, that's all I'm doing. So now suddenly, it looks like it's no longer pointing that way. Maybe it's a little bit more linear. All right, you guys, the next technique that I'm gonna show you is for the eyes that I'm still gonna be using the same bronzer and the same brush. This will give you the easiest, the most lifted smoky eye effect ever. Basically, I take the same brush, I press a little bit of that bronzing powder underneath the lower lash line, but just to the outer third of the eye, like wherever the brush fits. And by the way, this is a Lime Crime brush, I'm not sure if they still Still make it because it's kind of like a special one but I will definitely find a dupe for you and I will link it so once you've applied enough product here you could start kind of winging it out into the temple essentially you are establishing an eye contour at the outer corner you can go as thin or as thick as you like you can make it look like a line like I just did or you could take your big brush and literally blend it into your contour you see that? I feel like that makes a huge difference. And if that's too much, you can always go back with powder and soften it a bit. Next thing that I like to do is basically shade the entire lid with my bronzer. You can use an eyeshadow brush for this or whatever brush. I'm just gonna stick to this one. And as you can see, I'm not trying to make it super precise. I'm not trying to make it super dark. It's merely like a shadow across the lid, just to round out this area. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side and just show you the technique one more time. Outer third, start winging it out into the temple, literally flicking it. It's just a flick of the wrist, a flick of the wrist. <laughs> and then I'm gonna start adding that bronzer across the lid, across the eye socket. I'm not bringing it all the way in, just halfway in. And then if you wanna take a clean fluffy brush and just blend out this edge, you can definitely do that. If you wanna minimize the effect, you can go back with powder. Possibly Possibilities are endless, but this is the technique. Next, I'm gonna take a super, super, super shiny, almost like a wet shine type of eyeshadow. This one from Charlotte T from the new collection. This is the Hypnotizing Pop Shot in the shade Diamond Eyes. I'm gonna take my finger in there, warm it up against another finger, and then I'm gonna press that into the center of the lid and then distribute it across the lid into that bronzer. I'm not even looking in the mirror while I'm doing this, but the effect is just so pretty and it's so easy and it's so mesmerizing, you can't go wrong. All right, now I actually am gonna look in the mirror because I wanna make sure that I've distributed it evenly. And I wanna pop a little bit more in the center so that it really, really shines right there. So I'm gonna bring some of that light to the inner corner. Suddenly it looks like your smoky eye took an hour to complete. But meanwhile, it was so, so easy. Next, you guessed it, liner. I've got lots of tricks for you when it comes to liner. So today I'm gonna use this Benefit Their Real Extreme Precision Liner. Extra Black is the name. And basically I'm gonna show you a very quick and easy technique of how to create a cat eye. So remember that line that I used that starts from the angle of your lower lash line and kind of drags up to your temple? This is the same line that I'm gonna use for my liner. I'm gonna start at the outer corner. I'm pretending that I'm tracing the lower lash line angle. Next, I'm gonna make a really, really thin line in the center and I'm gonna connect it. Easy peasy. So here I'm going for a very minimal wing 
not anything crazy or long. Like I said, I want this look to be attainable and something that you could use for every day. But of course, if you want to elongate it or if you want to make it thicker or thinner, you can do that. But just remember the angle that you applied the previous product, AKA the bronzer or your eyeshadow if you're not using the technique. But basically following that same angle is what's gonna make it look really clean. So now let's do that on the other side. Lining the top lash line and connecting. Easy. Easy and they're actually not too off. They're pretty, pretty similar, which usually never happens to me. So this is a good sign. My technique is working. Another thing that I like to do is kind of press the liner into my lashes and in between them just to thicken the line and minimize that flesh from peeking through. I literally just like poke it in between my lashes. Be careful not to poke yourself in the eye and also try not to go into the waterline, literally just in between the lashes. For the inner corner liner, recently, I wanna say as recent as just like 2023, which is only two weeks old, I've been using a pencil liner, something like this Jones Road, the best pencil, and this is in a brown shade. Yep, brown. It's something that I saw, I wanna say on TikTok. Basically, I like to pinch my nose right here so that you can easily see where the lash line starts in the inner corner and then I kind of just extend it and then I take it back. Look at that. It's like the perfect little corner. If you want to connect it to your liquid liner, you can absolutely do that. But this to me creates the perfect, not too much, but just enough inner corner liner. So again, pinch and draw. And the best part is that if you make a mistake, a pencil is so much easier to remove than a liquid liner. Basically, it's just not that much of a commitment. So then if you wanna set it with eyeshadow, you can go ahead and use a dense brush, like a eyeliner brush or an angled brow brush, something like this, but soft. I'm gonna dip into my Tarte palette that I have handy that also totally randomly matches my shirt. I'm gonna dip into a dark brown eyeshadow and just set this whole situation. Or you could smooth it or you can extend it. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. But this technique, I feel, just makes this particular makeup trend much, much, much easier to achieve, especially if you have Asian eyes, if you have almond eyes, smaller eyes, if your epicanthic folds are hidden like mine. There you go. Next for lashes. I don't wanna be redundant, but I guess this is a redundant type of video. All of these are techniques that I've showed in individual videos, but I don't actually have them all in one video. So bear with me if you know this one. But what I like to do is I like to crimp my lashes close to the base. I like to use a lash curler that's on the flatter side, like this Refer or my favorite Laura Mercier. So basically after I curl my lashes, I also like to curl my bottom lashes. I know this could be pretty scary for some people, so by no means do you have to do this. I'm gonna use this Birdie Lashes Mascara and I'm gonna apply this mascara only to the tips, so not to the part that I crimp. Because my lashes are very straight, they're very short, and I wanna maximize them. So in order for me to do that, I'm not gonna apply mascara to the part that I crimp because it will be too heavy for my lashes. If you have longer lashes, however, you can get away with doing whatever to your lashes. But for me and my shorties, this is the technique that I've sort of developed for myself. It's something that I do have a separate video on. It's something that I've talked about in multiple other videos, but I'm sharing it again today just so I can have all of my techniques in one video. Why? Because I do think that some of these techniques are underrated. Some of them are not talked about enough. And now you can actually see my lashes. Next, I'm gonna take the same top wand. I'm gonna do my lower lashes, even though I haven't been doing them in a while, but I wanna show you this very easy technique that is picking up steam. I've seen people show this a lot more lately. Basically, I'm applying a shit ton of mascara to my lower lashes, just the tips, kind of making them really, really clumpy looking. And before they have a chance to dry, I'm gonna take my tweezers. I'm gonna create little doll lashes. I'm gonna start crimping them together to create little clusters of lashes, little cute dolly lashes. Do you see that? This is such a cute technique. I've been doing it for a while. I also like to pair it sometimes with rhinestones. I like to place the rhinestones in between the little gaps, but that's a whole other makeup technique. So for me, the only way I would wear mascara on my lower lashes at the current moment is if I were doing this technique and this particular trend. I think this is cute and fresh and it just looks like you put in some effort. It looks like stylized lashes as opposed to just your regular lower lashes that sometimes looks spidery anyway. So again, for this technique, don't be afraid to put on a lot of mascara and then you can start pinching. Boom. Okay, so I think at this point I'm done with the eyes. I want to do brows last because brows is a particular category. It 
is not a favorite of mine because I do my brows in a particular way. So I guess in this video, I'm just gonna take an opportunity to show you exactly how I like to do my brows and how I do them lately. So first what I like to do is take a pencil like this, the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. I use shade four and at the current moment, I'm really liking a softer brow, something that's a little bit more groomed, that's a little bit less arched. It's not like as thick and unruly as the boy brow trends have been. I like it to be clean, in fact. So what I'm doing is just filling in the gaps and I'm kind of rounding out my brow. So my brows are very arched naturally. This is just how they grow. So first I just like to perfect the shape a little bit. I'm not so much thickening it. I'm just elongating it a little bit here and maybe just thickening this center part and then just filling in any gaps. Again, rounding out that arch, elongating that tail, kind of like that. And then I'm gonna brush it out gently like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and laminate my brows. I'm using the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter, my absolute favorite brow gel, the only one that works on my super straight, super coarse, unruly brows. I'm gonna load it up and kind of brush them through the brow so that the strands are coated on all sides. I'm gonna brush it back comb it through. And then once I have enough product, I'm gonna start manipulating it in place. Grab this smear. Hopefully you guys can still see what I'm doing. I'm gonna start gluing this brow down. I'm gonna use my little tweezers here and hold it down. I don't really like to glue down the front and the center because then they, then I think that makes the brow look a little bit thicker. I only like to glue down the edges like that. Add a little bit more on this side. Okay, looks like they're already pretty stiff, so that's good for me. Just making sure that they are all laying down in the same direction. Just manipulating them, pressing it down. There. Once they are solidly glued to my head, that's when I like to use my NYX Lift and Snatch brow pen and make it look even more realistic. So then I just like to add a few individual brow strokes, kind of like that. And then same thing on the other side. And that's my brows. I have just a couple of things left, the lips and the highlighter. So I wanna go quickly and just show you some basic techniques, some tricks that I think you might find useful in 2023 and going forward. If you wanna go for that yourself but better type of vibe, I suggest going with a color that is similar to your blush or to your natural flush, which is also actually coincidentally the color of your lips. So for me, I'm gonna go for Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat Pencil in the shade Super size me, which is actually very, very close to my natural lip color. And I've already contoured my lips. So what I'm gonna do now is just sharpen the corners and then I'm gonna gently supersize them by overlining just the top of the cupid's bow and just the bottom of the lip. I always like to push my lip line a pinch up, but not in a clownish way, almost like in an invisible way. It's really easy to overdo it, so you have to be careful. Keep a clean brush handy, just in case you do. But basically, it's just the emphasis of a smile, just a little tiny hint of the lip line pointing up as opposed to down. I feel like this is a really good, easy trick that is underrated that I don't see a lot of people do. But this very subtle little nuance, I feel like it makes a big difference. See? So I'm gonna feather this lip color in ever so slightly. And for my lip color, I'm just gonna choose something that is similar to my lip color. I have this beautiful lip oil in the shade Pretty Fun from Dose of Colors. I think I might have shown this before, but I'm not sure. To me, this is a color that works great because it works with my blush, it works with my natural lip color, and it just pulls the whole look together. So now for the highlight, I'm gonna reach for the same Pillow Talk Face Palette. I'm gonna grab this uh, Laura Lee Los Angeles brush. I'm gonna dip into this shade here. I'm gonna apply my highlight to the part that's already kind of shining right here and also to my brow bone and also above the brow just kind of hugging this whole area here in 2023 I'm noticing that we are applying our makeup in a lifting way we are applying our highlighters higher our contours are much higher than before but we're applying less of everything I'm gonna highlight the tip of my nose and just down the bridge for a little glowy effect add a little bit of highlighter right here just for a little subtle glow a little bit along the jawline, just like that. And that's it, there you have it. My updated current face using all underrated makeup techniques that you should know in 2023. What do you think? Which of these techniques was your favorite? Let me know down below. I feel for me, probably a tie between the serum and foundation 
mixing to sheer out the foundation and to make it look a little bit more glowy. The underpainting technique specifically for the blush, I really like the way that blush shines underneath foundation when it's underpainted. I also, I gotta stand by my brow technique to me, it is the best, it is my fave, it's the one that I'm gonna be using forever. I also really love the downward blush technique when applying powder blush. Of course, strategic concealing. Of course, the lashes technique. I actually don't know if I have a fave because all of these have a time and a place and a specific purpose that you can use them for. So basically, what I'm trying to say is, I hope you find this video useful, goddammit. <laughs> No, seriously, I wanted to combine all of the underrated techniques as well as some of my favorite techniques that I use personally and just put them all in one video so that you can find it useful and also so you can share it with some other people that might find it useful, if you know what I mean. If you have someone in your life who is struggling with makeup, you know which video to share with them. All right, you guys, on that cheerful note, I'm gonna zoom on out. I'm gonna wish you a farewell, invite you to check out more of my videos over here. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out, and I'm out. Deuces.